Well, here we go with uh, lesson two of chapter 5.3. Um, just a slightly different perspective. That's why I've broken them up into two individual lessons. One was just count, uh, calculating concentration from solute and solvent data. This one is going to be relating it stoichiometrically or to the balanced equations that we learned how to do with dissociation and ionization. So for that, we're looking back into 5.2 and we looked at what was in solution and we learned that ionic salts and bases that are soluble in water will dissociate into the respective ions in solution. That leads to a balanced equation. Strong acids will ionize into brand new ions and remember for our six strong acids, if we're just pretending or that they are behaving ionically, we get a balanced uh, equation that we can work with as well. This is going to feel very much like what we did with those gas volumes, figuring out that if you had five liters of a reactant gas, you could predict the amount of liters of your product gases. All right, so let's just jump right into the examples. It makes the most sense that way. All right, we're taking a look at a sodium phosphate solution, so we need the balanced formula for that one. So as we take a look at what is in sodium phosphate, this is ionic, obviously. Na is a 1 plus from your data sheet. Phosphate is a 3 minus, so you can see the 3 to 1 uh, ratio needed for my neutral ionic salt. So there we go. There's Na3, PO4, and all ionic salts are solid. We need to see if this is going to dissolve. Now, I would assume most of these things will. All right, why would we give you a whole bunch of questions in which they don't? So there's phosphate. These are the things that will be soluble with phosphate, and you can see sodium right there. So this one does dissolve and therefore dissociates. So we would write our dissociation equation and indicate that it is dissociating. And I have three sodiums for every one phosphate in this one. So when I get sodium ions and I look at my balancing, it's going to take three of them. And then I have one phosphate in solution. From here, oops, I didn't leave myself very much room. I'll have to do better next time. All right, we do have a known concentration. It is 0.15 moles per liter of sodium phosphate. What is the concentration of each ion in solution? Well, I'm looking for a concentration here and a concentration here. All right, I'm just gonna move this over, do my rough work on a blank sheet of paper. Sorry, I didn't leave myself very much room. But if I have, and remember your Avogadro's law, 0 0.15 moles per liter of my sodium phosphate. Because the solution volumes in this thing would be the same, remember the amount of solvent and the amount of solution would be the same, all right? By adding a salt to water, you don't change the amount of water. So we find another shortcut to some of our stoichiometry and we can use moles per liter to convert to other moles per liter. Now think about it. You got 0.15 moles for every one liter of solution of this salt, but when it dissociates, it produces three times the amount of sodium ions in solution. What do you think the concentration will be? Well, logic dictates that it'll be three times this amount. So we use that mole ratio. All right, 0.15 moles per liter of sodium phosphate in stoichiometry. We use the substance as a unit, and we're going to go to the Na plus ion. Now, in our balanced equation, as you take a look at it, you had one part sodium phosphate for every three parts sodium ion. Well, look at your units. You have moles per liter. You just have to multiply that by three, and we can predict the concentration of sodium ions based upon this stoichiometric ratio. So this one ends up being 0.45 moles per liter. Now we can think about this one again critically. You have 0.15 moles per liter of your original salt. When it dissociates, it produces one part phosphate. The mole ratio here is one to one. Do you think there's any real difference for a differing concentration? We can prove this with a stoichiometric ratio here. 
0.15 moles per liter of your sodium phosphate. We can multiply that through the ratio here between sodium phosphate and sodium ions. And, oops, sodium ions, sorry, those were phosphate ions this time. And in our balanced chemical equation, we saw it was 1 to 1. So 0.15 times 1 divided by 1 gives us 0.15 moles per liter. So we can use the balanced equation so long as the volume stays constant to figure out what these various ion concentrations will be as they break apart and get pulled apart by water. So there are essentially four ions for every one mole. Three of them are positive sodium ions. One is a negative phosphate ion, and so it dissociates in a 3 to 1 ratio, causing a 3 to 1 concentration difference. All right, we'll take a look at another one here. Here we have strontium hydroxide. Strontium is a 2 plus ion. Hydroxide is a 1 minus ion. So strontium hydroxide is that formula right there. Now from here, we go back to our data sheet. We look for hydroxide, which is found over here on the right-hand side. All right, there we go. And we can see that certain things are soluble, including strontium, with hydroxide. So it falls into the very soluble category.